What's going on guys, Kenny Conway here. And if you're watching this video right now, you wanna know how it's possible to go out and get large lines of credit from the bank. Specifically, how to manage your cash in order to get more credit, cash flow and credit. Now, the common misconception is most people like when they start a business and they go, I need money, I need money, I need money. But banks don't like to loan money to people who don't already have a proven track record of managing their money effectively. So. Never spend on credit what you don't have in cash or cash flow. I repeat, never spend on credit what you don't have in cash or cash flow. And let me be clear. If you have a credit card, a line of credit where you're able to spend the money as cash, if you do not have the cash to pay that balance in full by the reporting date, do not use the money because it's going to affect the revolving side of the 30% of your score, right? You're going to put yourself in debt. Credit is not free money. And then when you try to go get more money, they're going to be like, nah, bro, you're mismanaging the money that you have. So the number one principle we got to have, we have to understand is never spend on credit where we don't have in cash or cash flow. Now, the reason why I say cash flow is because if you're an entrepreneur, you understand that, hey, look, I can take this particular piece, I can take this money, invest it in my business, and then it's gonna produce uh, $5,000, $10,000, $15,000 cash flow, and then I can take that cash flow to pay off that line over the course of three months or six months or whatever the case is, so that way I'm making my payments, okay? So it's so pivotal that you get this because many people, they go, they think credit is free money, they spend it, and then not understanding how the credit algorithm works, they end up lowering their credit score and wondering, well, I don't miss any payments while it's my score low. It's because you have high utilization. Because utilization affects 30% of your score. Now, when you break down your credit score, I'm gonna break this down really quickly so you understand. It's five categories of credit. Payment history, utilization, how you use revolving lines of credit, new creditor inquiries, length of credit, and then credit mix. Those are the five categories. Now, 30% of your score has to do with how you use your revolving credit. You with me so far? Great. Now, your credit score can range between 300 at the lowest, 850 at the highest. So that means there's a total of 550 points available. You with me so far? Cool. I'm glad you are. Now, if there's 550 points, to keep this extremely simple, 30% of 550 is 165. I did the math for you with me so far. All right. So if 30% has to do with utilization, and if I have a, let's keep things extremely simple, $10,000 credit card, and that credit card or revolving credit has to do with 30% of my score, if I use all 10,000 of that card, and it reports to the credit bureaus that I'm using all 10,000 of the card, how many points am I taking advantage of in that category? Zero. That's why when you max out your credit cards and you have max out balances, your score goes down anywhere between 30 to almost 100, 150 points because you're, you're overusing all of the category of credit in that scenario. Makes sense? Great, I'm glad it does. I know I said a lot, but you gotta get that. And that's why I say never spend on credit what you don't have in cash. So if I'm gonna spend the 10 racks, I got the 10 racks. So I already know I have that money set aside. So when you start thinking about it, it's really important to identify all of your variable expenses, your fixed expenses. So that way you know, okay, well on average, my variable expenses is this, my fixed expenses is this. I was gonna use the cash anyways, so instead of me using my debit card, I'm gonna use a credit card, use it, pay it off before the reporting date, so that way I can still use that same $10,000, but I've got the $10,000 sitting in cash that I was gonna pay anyways, and I pay it off before the reporting date, and guess what? Depending upon the credit card, you'll get points for doing that. Make sense? Great. So let's break this down even more so that way you're really, really clear on how you manage your cash moving forward because budgeting does not work. Cash flow management is what works. And then if you want to get lines of credit from the bank, you have to be good with your cash flow. Now, at this point, um, I have 
I want to say about six hundred or seven hundred thousand dollars in revolving lines of credit, probably more. But I use my credit cards all the time, right? So here's a quick screenshot of several of the like six hundred rewards points I have with one of my credit cards, and here's another screenshot of one hundred and twenty thousand rewards points, and here's another one of ninety nine thousand rewards points. I think you get the picture. So when you start managing your cash flow, you want to take what I call the three bucket approach. You want to have a fixed bucket, which is for your past commitments. You want to have a variable bucket, which is for your present choices. And you want to have a future bucket because your future self is going to want to go on that trip to Dubai. It's going to want to buy a new car, want to buy a new home, buy Christmas gifts, whatever retire one day, have an emergency fund. So when you're managing your cash, you've got to be thinking about the past, present, and the future. So an example of a past expense is rent or mortgage, minimum monthly payments on cards, uh, utility bills. You've already agreed to pay those past commitments. Many people get messed up because their present choices aren't clear and they end up like Jeezy made a song. I won't say the name of the song, but um, you, I will use one of the clips that he used in the song. Basically, you're supposed to pay the mortgage when you bought a chain. Come on, bro. What you doing, bro? That's a bad decision. Now you're messing up your mortgage payment. You're messing up your credit. So we got to be really, really clear about what the number is for our fixed bucket expenses. And then when we get paid, we just know that, hey, look, my fixed bucket expenses are three racks or two racks a month. I ain't touching that money because I know that's for fixed. Now. Where the wheels fall off is present choices because you be in your feelings. You a human being. You be tight. You had a tough week. You mad at your girlfriend. You mad at your boyfriend about whatever it is. Your boss pissed you off. Your employee pissed you off. Whatever the case is, I'm buying me some shoes. I'm going out. I'm turning up and I'm going to blow my money in the present because I'm emotionally hijacked with my spending. Nah, you got to identify up front and discipline yourself that even though You had a tough week. Now, I'm not saying don't get a good drink, and I'm not saying not to buy your shoes, but you have to do it within reason because if you have no clarity around your variable choices, going out to eat, buying shoes, being an emotional spender, you're going to blow your money and or overspend your money, and now you won't have any money for the future. And your future self will be like, hey, bro, why you ain't put that money aside? Right? Why you ain't do that? Now, now we got a flat tire. Now we got an auto deductible. Now we got a water heater that's broken up and my credit card is maxed out because I thought it was free money and I can't get this thing fixed. Now you're riding around with a, a, a dented up car or you don't have cold, you don't have hot water because you didn't put money aside for the future or you tight because you want to go on some trip or you want to be on the gram doing all of this stuff, but you can't because you ain't got no bread because you didn't put no money aside for the future. So every time you're paid, put money towards the past, present, and the future, right? And I like to use the future bucket as retirement accounts. It can be a savings account. It can be a trip to somewhere you want to go, whatever the case is. But you got the money going there and it's allocated. So now when you're using your credit cards, you get what I'm saying at this point. Never spend on credit, which you don't have in cash. You can say, hey, look, I've identified that I've got $3,000 in fixed bucket expenses and I've got $2,000 in variable bucket expenses. I'm going to use credit card one for my variable bucket expenses because I was going to spend that $2,000 anyways. And I'm going to use credit card two for the $3,000 because I was going to use that anyways. And then I'm going to use the cards. Then I'm going to pay it off with the cash that I already have for my paycheck or if I pay myself. Then I'm going to get the rewards points, pay it off. And then also I'm going to take the extra $1,000 or $1,500, whatever your, your salary is and put that towards my future buckets. Maybe that future bucket is a a retirement account. Maybe that future bucket is starting a business. Maybe that future bucket is just wanting to make sure you got money set aside. Maybe that future bucket is wanting to get started in the stock market. Who knows? But you're putting that money aside. So when, not if, when life happens, you can pull from the future bucket in that savings account, take care of life, keep it moving, don't throw up your cash flow. Right. So I'll end with this. Your credit score is a reflection of your financial behavior. Your bank account balance is a reflection of your financial behavior. Now, I'm not judging. It's either a negative account, which I used to have, 
a one, two, three, four, six, seven digit number that reflects your financial behavior. So if you want your account balance to go up, you got to behave yourself in that manner. Apply these principles, never spend on credit what you don't have in cash, and you will have the money that you want and achieve your financial goals. I'll see you in the next video. So right below this video, if you're looking to figure out the process of not only improving your cash flow, but the strategy that you need to be able to start taking your credit to the next level and the, learn a simple strategy that's overlooked by 95% of people fixing their credit, click the link below, register for my training. I'm gonna cover it all there in that video.